Coming up, Mother Nature unleashes her fury on 21 counties in Kentucky and southern Indiana. And at daybreak, residents surveyed some of the worst tornado damage since 1974. And why is there a big hole in Broadway tonight? Channel 32 News is next. Bet you want this delicious, juicy, big deluxe, right? Well, go ahead, take it. <laughs> a quarter pound of American beef topped with melted cheese. Come on. Okay, okay. No more kidding. It's all yours. I mean it. Hey, there's only one way to get a Hardy's Big Deluxe. Go to Hardy's. And right now, we'll make it really easy. Get our Big Deluxe and Crispy Curls for just $1.99. Hardy's. All kinds of good stuff. And the best blueberries are the wild ones up here in Maine. So when the folks at Martha White told me how many they needed for their double blueberry muffins, I told them we'd have to pick all the berries in Maine to get that many. Now, I know putting all them blueberries in a muffin will make a lot of blueberry lovers real happy, but it's making some of the ones around here darn ornery. Okay, okay, but just one more. New Martha White double blueberry muffins. Double the real blueberries makes them twice as good. If you're thinking about buying a Camry or an Accord, think about this. The Nissan Stanza has a more powerful standard engine. Mm -hmm. It's got more standard features inside and out, and it costs just $11,650. The 1990 Nissan Stanza, either we're overachievers or they're overpriced. Take the Nissan Stanza Challenge. Test drive a Stanza. If you still buy a Camry or an Accord, we'll give you $100. Look at that car. Making a splash. Something new, cooking seafood good for you. Long John Silver, making a splash. Baked seafood, doing it right. Flaky and white, oh so light. Get them fast at Long John Silver's. Baked cod, cod supreme, or shrimp scampi. Making a splash. Try our delicious new baked fish and seafood, starting at just $3.99. This is Pulitzer Broadcasting, 32 WLKY, Louisville. Now, Steve Bergen, Sandra Hughes, Lee Jaden's weather, and Rick Van Hoos with sports. This is Channel 32 News. Good evening, everyone. Topping our news, another tornado in Indiana today. This one touched down in Rush County. That's in central Indiana. But there were no reports of damage or injuries. In Petersburg and Bedford, Indiana, they are still counting their dead and assessing the damage from last night's tornadoes. Bedford may be grabbing the headlines, but other southern Indiana counties are reeling from last night's tornadoes. A trailer park was hit in Salem. A shopping center in Bowling Alley suffered heavy damage in Sellersburg. Thankful. We're thankful nobody got hurt. Nope. A twister roared through a section of the Southway Village trailer park in Salem. We lost everything. Everything's gone. Just flattened it. Trailers were tossed around like matchboxes, but many here heeded the tornado warnings. They left their homes for ditches. At daybreak, they searched for something to salvage. In Sellersburg, the roof of the Silver Creek Plaza was ripped away as though someone had taken a can opener to it. And all of a sudden, we heard this class and, and just a big old boom, so we just hit the deck. Businesses here suffered heavy damage. I wanted to cry. <laughs> a twister also hit nearby Hamburg, smashing a service station and flipping a mobile home into a nearby creek. In Floyd County, crews worked to open roads filled with debris. Other Indiana communities damaged by tornadoes overnight include Orleans, Montgomery, Brownstown, the Seymour area, and Shoals, but in all of those areas, injuries were minor. It didn't take long for the Red Cross to get in place today. Volunteers like Terry sandwiches. Bivens was helping out within minutes of the disaster. Bivens spent her time visiting all of the areas hit by the storm, offering food, drinks, and comfort to those in need. Red Cross officials say they stick around as long as they're needed, and by the looks of the damage, they may be around for a while. If you are still seeking information on relatives or friends in the tornado-stricken areas, these phone numbers may help. In Brownstown, the number to call is 812-358-2345. In French Lick, 1-800-669-7362. In Bedford, the number for the Red Cross is 812-2757-880. The Red Cross Washington County number is 812-254-3354. And in Orleans, you can call 
812-865-3359. For road closing information because of the storm, you can call the Indiana State Police at 1-800-852-3970. Although no one was killed or seriously injured here in Kentucky, the twisters did not ignore the bluegrass state. Six counties were hit by six different tornadoes. At least four people are reported to have suffered injuries. Farm subdivision was hardest hit in Oldham County. At one family's former home, they search for whatever can be salvaged. It seemed like a noise, just like a balloon blowing or something, and then it just, like it popped and it just exploded. I guess that's when the house just, everything blew out, you know. The Robert Heim home is only one of about a dozen destroyed or damaged in LaGrange. A lumber company is reduced to lumber just a mile. I'm trying to salvage out all of her stuff, what's left, you know. Lisa Eads' grandmother, 66-year-old Mildred Olson, was hospitalized with minor injuries. Here's an overview of Kentucky and the other five counties hit by twisters. In Morgan County, there were no injuries, but power lines and trees were down all across the area. The damage to Bath County is still unknown, but no one was injured. In Boone County, there was minor damage to one structure. In Shelby County, several roads are closed, power lines are down, no one was injured. And in Trimble County, two people were injured and more than a million dollars in damage is estimated. Two other counties sustained damage from heavy winds and rain. Indiana and Kentucky were not the only states suffering tornado damage overnight. Damage was reported in six other states, Ohio, Kansas, Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Illinois, but only Illinois reported a fatality. Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev visited the Midwest today, but not to survey tornado damage. The Soviet leader went to Minneapolis to meet with former Vice President Walter Mondale and Minnesota's government, governor after he ended summit talks in Washington, D.C. Gorbachev was scheduled to visit a dairy farm, but that was canceled. He lunched with the governor and then met with top business leaders, but not before he and his wife greeted Minneapolis residents en route to the governor's mansion. Both President Gorbachev and President Bush have dubbed the superpower summit a success. The four-day meeting ended in a news conference this afternoon. Both leaders agree that they still disagree on some issues, but they say they'll try to meet regularly. Two issues the presidents are at odds over, a united Germany and the Soviet treatment of the Baltic republics. It was one year ago today when Chinese troops cracked down on pro-democracy protesters in Tiananmen Square. The government marked the anniversary by closing the square. A small group of students at Beijing University threw bottles and bricks at security forces as they patrolled. One man who approached a foreign TV crew with a protest poster was dragged away by police. Tomorrow morning, the mayor of the nation's capital will go on trial. Marion Barry is charged with lying to a grand jury and using drugs. He faces up to 26 years in jail and almost $2 million in fines. About 250 jurors will be summoned tomorrow. It could take days just to seat a jury. Any chances of a plea agreement were put down by the prosecutor in the case. Barry contends he is innocent. Coming up, Mother Nature dealt us one of her worst hands last night. What will she have in store for the beginning of the week? Reed Yaden joins us next with the latest forecast. For Kentuckiana's forecast anytime, call the Channel 32 Weather Center at 585-1212. For the latest forecast, stay tuned. Reed Yaden's Channel 32 Weather Center forecast is coming up next. If you're concerned about getting rid of weeds this way, try a better way. Hi, I'm Jim Martindale, and I'd like to introduce you to another great gardening product, the Weed Popper. It's all you need to pull pesky weeds from your yard and garden. Simply place the Weed Popper next to the weed, step on it, and the weed pops right out. Move the handle forward, and the weed comes right off. The Weed Popper pulls weeds without chemicals, chemicals that may be dangerous to your garden, yard, and groundwater supply. And with the Weed Popper, there's no more kneeling and bending. The Weed Popper pops weeds out as easy as one, two, three. And because it's made right here in the USA, you know it's a quality tool. And it's backed by a 100% lifetime guarantee. It makes a great gift that will be appreciated by anyone into gardening. The Weed Popper. Look for this display. The Weed Popper is available at participating Taylor Drug, Walgreens, Kmart, Furrow Building Materials, Ace, True Value, Service Star, and Century Hardware Stores. Makes a great gift. Our panel of experts compared the new Chevy full-size truck with the competition. Yep, Chevy has more horses. Better gas mileage too. Independent front suspension. <laughs> Whoa, Kaboom! And don't forget, two-sided galvanized steel. 
And now, get 700 cash back on the number one selling full-size truck in Kentuckiana. See the Kentuckiana Chevy Geo dealer in your hometown. Luis, there's more! Sacks are my life. Sacks are his life. So I live for White Castle Sigma Pack Sacks. Four delicious sacks of savings, like the eight pack for me and my old sack. <laughs> or a family pack, or a snack pack, or a 20 pack for sack and down, dude. Hey, slide into a White Castle. The only thing better than living in a Sigma Pack Sack is eating from one. Mm. Snack pack two twenty nine, eight pack five thirty nine, family pack nine oh nine, twenty pack nine fifty nine. The packs are back. White Castle. The death count has risen in Petersburg, Indiana. Bruce Dunbar is live tonight via satellite in Petersburg. Bruce, what can you tell us? Well, Steve and Sandy, we're standing on the main drag here in downtown Petersburg, and I've got to tell you, it's an eerie feeling. The city has been plunged into darkness. There's no electricity, there's no water, and all around us is evidence of last night's twisters that roared through here. Let's take a look here at a street lamp that was snapped off at the base by the high winds. That gives you some evidence of uh, how strong the winds actually were. Behind me is a diner that's been shredded by the tornado. Ironically, though, inside some chairs are still neatly stacked on top of tables where somebody left them when they closed up last night. Over here, somebody's brand new Buick. At least it was new 24 hours ago. Now they can't sell it for scrap metal. Six people have died here so far. 60 people have been injured. A nursing home has been flattened. An elementary school was leveled. This is the first community here in southern Indiana that was hit by that line of tornadoes and uh, thunderstorms that ripped through here uh, last night. Uh, we're very close to the Illinois border. After uh, this place was struck, uh, the storm system moved on, of course, to the center of the state and to Bedford. We were there earlier this afternoon, and we learned that one person was killed. Fifty-four were injured. We'll show you more on that story now. The tornado cut a path of destruction half a mile wide and 10 miles long. Hardest hit was a group of roadside businesses just north of the intersection of US 50 and State Highway 37. The mobile home you're looking at right here was the first mobile home sitting right there. It was sitting in front of these, so it evidently picked it up, brought it over, and set it back down right there. The twister flattened 11 businesses, including a furniture store, a restaurant, a used car lot, and Danny Compton's step saver a combination gas station and convenience store. It said it split into two, two different clouds and two funnels, and they both took off and tore everything up. The tornado also roared through Riverview Trailer Park, destroying every home. William Richardson's was one of them. It contained everything he owned. None of it was insured. What did you lose? Uh, everything. Homes in several nearby neighborhoods were also damaged. And many of those left untouched are without electricity or telephone service this evening. The tornado snapped at least 50 telephone poles and down more than five miles of cable. Have you ever been, uh, seen a tornado like this before? Not this bad. No, this is probably the worst one I've seen in 34 years. Indiana Governor Evan Bayh surveyed the damage from a National Guard helicopter about mid-afternoon today. And then he landed for a close-up look. It's flying over the scene, uh, you see uh, uh, homes have been destroyed, businesses wiped out, uh, trees and power lines snapped like toothpicks. It uh, reminds you of the awesome uh, destructive power of nature. There's no specific estimate on dollar damage here, but it obviously will run into the tens of millions of dollars. Insurance will cover part of the cost of rebuilding. Governor Bai has applied to Washington for a designation of Bedford and Petersburg and other communities hit by the tornadoes for federal disaster relief. Uh, if he gets that designation, then there will be low-interest government loans available to property owners so that they can rebuild. Stephen Sandy? Bruce, you've been to the two hardest-hit areas in southern Indiana, Bedford and now Petersburg. What's the feeling among the people? Is it, is it one of, of rebuilding now? Yes, I think it is, Steve, uh, particularly here in Petersburg, where they've had a double whammy. They did to a lesser degree in Bedford. There was a lot of flooding here, as you know, a couple of weeks ago in southern Indiana. When I mentioned earlier that Petersburg was out of water, they've been out of water for almost a month now. The electricity now on top of that is out, and uh, the people here shake their heads ruefully. I just talked to a man at a service station uh, across the street, and he said, what else can happen to us? We can't imagine anything worse than what we've already gone through. It's got to get better from this point on. Stephen Sandy? Bruce, thank you very much. National Guard.
has secured the towns of Bedford and Mitchell, Indiana. Roads were closed as of 9.30 Eastern Time. That means no one will be allowed in or out of the two towns. The idea is to keep traffic to a minimum because of downed power lines and blocked roads. There is a big hole in the middle of Broadway in downtown Louisville, and it's going to be there for weeks. There was a cave-in of a sewer line on Broadway at Preston Street tonight. To fix it, the Metropolitan Sewer District says the entire intersection will have to be excavated. The brick sewer line may be 100 years old. Somewhere there is a, uh, a void developed, uh, and as part of the sewer, uh, probably fell in being brick and old, uh, and washed the material out from underneath uh, the pavement. And the pavement is just hanging there in midair. MSD's Carl Neumeyer says, with a hundred miles of old brick sewer line in the city, there is always the possibility of more cave-ins. Fixing this one may take six weeks. It has been a long couple of days for Captain Radiate, and last night he was uh, issuing all the tornado warnings and watches and advising you on the significance of those, and uh, today you've been up in the helicopter surveying all the uh, storm damage. We talked about it earlier, and uh, Governor By said it again. It looks like toothpicks. You just can't believe the destructive force of these storms. So as we kind of have one more little postscript of this whole episode, I want to make a couple of points here. First of all, when a tornado warning is issued, take it seriously, please. I hope last night, if you were in one of the areas where a warning was issued, I hope you took the proper precautions. If you did not, shame on you. I hope you will learn something about what you need to do and in the future take it. But take the warnings serious, please. And for folks that live in uh, mobile homes, some areas require it, some areas don't, but you should require it for yourself, and that's tie-down straps on those mobile homes. They're kind of like belts. They go over the entire mobile home, and they're anchored in the ground. We interviewed someone today, uh, Gary Collins did, up in Salem, that said, I'm alive today because of tie-down straps on my mobile home. Keep those points in mind. Now let's all kind of take a, a deep breath, kind of relax tonight, a little lower key than we were last night. I think that's okay with everyone. We'll have some weather watcher reports now. Certainly much more pleasant than it was last night. And I think uh, Mother Nature can certainly show an ugly hand and turn around 24, 36 hours later and produce a very, very beautiful day. We have a couple of nice days coming up. You're not going to need the air conditioning. I've refused to turn mine on, so come close, but I haven't turned it on yet. In Paoli tonight, Orange County. They were rumbling up there this time last night. Tonight, cloudy skies. 68 degrees in Paoli. Kim and Dwight Dozier out in Plainview. A couple of brand new weather watchers. Welcome aboard. 71 degrees. And happy birthday greetings to Gene Hardison. He's celebrating with his family and friends. Big celebration still going on down in Nelson County tonight. And they report 70 degrees. And uh, Gene Hardison and his family began uh, the early hours of his birthday in the basement during a tornado warning, and that's exactly where they belong. Now then, the rest of our weather story starts with a beautiful sunset tonight. We captured this with the Channel 32 tower cam. And at the present time, temperature's dropping off, but look at that humidity, a lot lower than it was this time 24 hours ago. Humidity 54% at 76 degrees, quite windy, gusting up to 30 miles an hour from the southwest, and the pressure holding steady. Today's high on the third day of June, 82 degrees. One degree above normal, high of 81, and the low was, nope, the low was not 82. How about uh, the low was 62 degrees? Sorry about that. The low was 62. A normal low is 60. We had eight hundreds of an inch rain officially today, and that occurred during the very early morning hours. A few sprinkles around some sections of the Channel 32 viewing area, those will be dissipating. The clouds that rolled in tonight we're heralding the arrival of a secondary weak cold front that's moving through the area. We'll get those clouds out of the way tomorrow, I'll get some sunshine in here. Why is it so windy? Well, this intense low pressure system that spawned this entire uh, weather maker is centered up over the Great Lakes, moving on to the east. Very, very intense low pressure system. The winds wrapping around it. Very, very gusty through much of the Midwest tonight. As I say, our winds here gusting up to 30 miles an hour. For your Monday, here's the way it looks. Present time, temperatures around the Channel 32 very area in the 70s and 80s, and humidities will be comfortable, even some 60s showing up, particularly up through portions of Indiana. Our temperature here will be pretty close to 70 degrees, give or take a degree or two on either side, but those humidity levels will be on the very comfortable side. Now, here's the forecast from the Channel 32 Weather Center. Skies will remain mostly cloudy overnight. 
The overcast running about 6,500 feet out there, but visibilities are very good. Temperatures in the mid-50s, good snoozing weather. We'll catch up on our sleep we lost last night, hopefully. Mostly sunny tomorrow, and the high around 70 degrees. Let's look a little further into the week. On Tuesday, the way it looks right now, nice sunny day, temperatures in the low 70s. Whoops, chance for thunder showers back in the forecast again. On Wednesday and Thursday, as temperatures move into the lower 80s. So on Monday and Tuesday, let's just prepare to enjoy these days. If you're in a position to, I know a good many of you that are watching us tonight are going to be spending that time rebuilding and cleaning up. Mm -hmm. Our thoughts are with you. You know, I hate to date us, but you know, you and I were both covering uh, the 1974 tornado here at Channel right 32. Right here at this very TV station, we were. It was Deja Eyewitness vu. News. <laughs> right. And Deja were, vu. If I remember right, you were shooting aer aerials. Uh, yes. Also, the flying. Damage in Northfields. Right. You're going to be here 16 years from now? Uh, well, I'll <laughs> reserve comment That's a big on that. question. Ask the boss. <laughs> Thanks, Reed. Still to come, could the Reds keep winning? <laughs> Fred Calgill will have that. A little horse racing and all the sports coming up next. Stylish winner on the outside is trying desperately to stick with him. But Valenzuela looks confident on Sunday silence and he flicked the... Bet you want this delicious, juicy, big deluxe, right? Well, go ahead, take it. <laughs> a quarter pound of American beef topped with melted cheese. Come on. Okay, okay. No more kidding. It's all yours. I mean it. Hey, there's only one way to get a Hardee's Big Deluxe. Go to Hardee's. And right now, we'll make it really easy. Get our Big Deluxe and Crispy Curls for just $1.99. Hardee's. All kinds of good stuff. It's time for the Nissan 500. We have to sell 500. Make that 499 cars and trucks by June 4th. You can save big with factory to dealer incentives on 1990 stanzas. Get $1,000 cash back from Nissan on the reliable two-door Sentra XE. And get $1,000 cash back on the tough standard hard body 4x2. So enter the Nissan 500 at your nearest Nissan dealer today. Because they're going fast. In August of 1980, Channel 32 News introduced a weekly feature on its 6 p.m. newscast. The feature was called Wednesday's Child. The reporter was Liz Eberman. She's dried a lot of tears. She's made a lot of smiles. Most of all, she's taken the time to care about our kids, about our community, about us. Wednesday's Child with Liz Eberman, celebrating 10 years with Channel 32 News. Because if it matters to you, it matters to us. And Fred Calgill is filling in tonight for Rick Van Hoos. And since you're filling in, I guess that's why you're wearing this casual apparel underneath the desk. Yeah, he doesn't want you to know what he's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> I can wear shorts once in a while. And, you know, Bruce Dunbar the other day uh, maybe stand up and show it off. But I think one exposure of the legs is enough for this audience. Please, no, For a darn a long time. <laughs> yes, so we will talk about uh, horses with better legs than mine. Hello again, everybody. 1989 Kentucky Derby champ Sunday Silence made his four-year-old debut in the Californian Stakes at Hollywood Park tonight. The Charlie Whittingham Colt trained so impressively uh, this spring, he has scared off all but two challengers in this race, in the $300,000 race. Here's how the Hollywood Park track announcer called the stretch run. The outside is trying desperately to stick with him, but Valenzuela looks confident on Sunday Silence, and he flicked the champ into overdrive. Sunday Silence pinched more than a length. Stylish winner is trying gallantly, followed by Charlatan, but Sunday Silence is the leader. Sunday Silence a length in front of Stylish winner. Sunday Silence still in front. It's a triumphant return to the racetrack. Sunday Silence by three quarters of a length. Stylish winner. Jockey Pat Valenzuela appears fully recovered from surgery last winter to remove bone chips from a knee. He went a mile and an eighth in 148 flat. Sunday Silence now nine wins, four seconds, and 13 career starts. Earnings of close to five million bucks. Pay 220 for a $2 win ticket. He's scheduled to beat Easy Goer later this summer. Before this race... Floyd County, Indiana, no one was killed by the tornado. For that, they are thankful. Neighbors and friends console each other as they face the task of cleaning up. I'm glad they didn't know anything about it because if they went to the basement... Here's where we've been at, right here in this concrete. Joe Batliner has three children who live within a one-mile area of each other. Together, the Batliners have weathered this storm. Joe's daughter, son-in-law, and granddaughter barely escaped with their lives. Doug Batliner's home was relatively unharmed. Yeah, we were very fortunate to be alive. David Batliner, his wife, and children lost part of their home and are cleaning up and counting their blessings. I feel lucky. I feel super fortunate. You know, kids are all right, twice all right. You know, I still got a house. A lot of people don't even have anything. Um, 
I don't know. I guess, you know, God was holding his hand on my roof or something. Joe Batliner is starting to sort through the rubble at his daughter's home. This family will pull together, work together, and rebuild their lives. The Batliners are not so much concerned with their material losses. After all, through some miracle, three generations survived the tornado of 1990. The only thing that's left standing is the Blessed Virgin Mary. It's standing. She's still standing straight. And I guess she brought them out of it. That's the only, that's the only thing I can figure out. You know, only one member of the Batliner family was injured. The son-in-law, he's in the hospital, but the family says he's getting much better. Well, that's terrific news. Uh, they're a very inspiring family. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you again tonight at 11. Good night.